if I go back to childhood, Bruce was kind of like this vague pop star name that I would hear because like the name Springsteen is like relatively iconic. Like I, I would hear alongside like, oh, Springsteen, Madonna, Stevie Wonder, Bob Marley. It's just like there's iconic names, but it's just like for some reason, I didn't quite know the significance of a certain iconic person. Like compared to like the Beatles who people know what they look like or Elvis mm-hmm. people know what they look like. It's just like there's kind of these pop star names that are very iconic, but depending on what decade you grew up in, you might not have like the strong cultural context. And then I think somewhere down the line, I learned that, you know, Bruce is sort of, in some ways, he's like the face of New Jersey. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Set Lessing Bruce, your podcast all about Bruce Springsteen, his music, and mostly his fans. I am your host, Jesse Jackson, as we continue our countdown to episode 1000. Um, boy, that's a lot of Bruce talk. Um, joining me today is a new friend, Eric Lynn. Eric, welcome to the show. It's great to be here. Thank you for actually, yeah, thank you for letting me be on the show, Jesse. Well, you are very welcome. I am always happy to have a new friend. Tell us a little about yourself. Uh, well, I guess for me personally, I'm at the stage where I'm in a bit of a transitional stage, but basically I'm an aspiring YouTuber and also I'm studying digital marketing and hopefully I'm hoping to pursue at least one of those two paths and seeing where it goes. And uh, as as you can tell by being on the show, I'm also a Bruce fan. Yeah. So what you you talked about being a YouTuber? Talk to me a little bit about that. What are what are you working on? What because that's a very broad uh, topic, right? <laughs> oh, let's see. Well, I think for for me, like YouTube started out as like this creative outlet because I like to do, I like to record voices, I like to tell stories. And I also like, I think I like to teach in a way. So it's just like YouTube provide this outlet to throw out a lot of different ideas and to see what sticks. And I think, I think for now, it's like I've settled on sort of like, I I like reading poems and stories, but hopefully I, I, I'm still developing my creative identity. Okay, good. All right. Well, very nice. Well, uh, a little bit later, I'll give you a chance to tell us where we can hear some of your fine work. But Eric, I always like to start at the beginning. So tell me, where did you grow up at? And what kind of music did your family listen to when you were younger? Well, um, so as I said earlier, I am from central New Jersey. Uh, I I am from a town let's I usually just describe it as near Princeton because like everyone knows Princeton but just like a lot of the surrounding areas people don't know so okay I, yeah so I'm a I grew up in New Jersey and um in terms of music I'd say you know I when I was trying to answer this question it's like I I didn't get a straight answer from my parents so I had to look I had to look at their CD collection and it's, I think it's like they listen to a lot of the pop music of their day. Like they're, they're baby boomers. So it's like mm-hmm. a lot of, I think sixties, seventies music. I think, let me consult this. Uh, I think some of the big names, like there's in the CD collection, there's Bob Dylan, the who Rod Stewart. Um, I think, In terms of my childhood recollection, I know Harry Chapin was a big name, like songs like Cats in the Cradle or Flowers Are Flowers Are Red in particular. Like, like there are so many colors in the rainbow. Great Uh, song, great song. uh, Also, 
I think Puff the Magic Dragon, Peter, Paul, and Mary, Carpenters. So it's like, I wouldn't say my parents were like fans of any specific artist in that sense, but like, I think they they had like a pretty sizable slice of pop music now that I think about it. Do you, were, was music a big part of the house? Like, did they play a lot of music or is it just on more on the sidelines? Um, it's, it's, I, I'd say music was a part, okay. but it's like, it, I don't think it was like a dedicated, oh, oh, you have to listen to this vinyl yeah. or not, not that kind of music fan, but it's like, there's like an enjoy, appreciation of music in the sense like, oh, people, we would like, or my dad or my mom would sing along to something or, okay. Um, and of course I, or like like we did take music lessons when we were younger. So there, there was like some appreciation, but not like, maybe not in the same sense of music aficionado, aficionado type thing. Sure. No, I understand. And there is, that is not uncommon. You know, I get both answers. I get sometimes like, oh, absolutely. You know, music was always in the house. You know, the, the radio was always on, the the stereo was playing, they had LPs, and then others like, no, not really. They would kind of play the car radio when they drive, but, you know, this wasn't, you know, wasn't a big musical influence. So I, I kind of get both with guests. Mm-hmm. Did, um, so when, can you remember when you first discovered Bruce and what about him spoke to you? Hmm. I, I I was kind of rehearsing this in my head, like okay. The I'm trying to think the, the long version or the short version of Bruce because I think for me you can do both. <laughs> so I th- I think like for me Bruce was like this. If I go back to childhood, Bruce was kind of like this vague pop star name that I would hear because like the name Springsteen is like relatively iconic, like. A, I would hear alongside like, oh, Springsteen, Madonna, Stevie Wonder, Bob Marley. It's just like, there's iconic names, but it's just like, for some reason, I didn't quite know the significance of a certain iconic person. Like, like compared to like the Beatles, who people know what they look like, or Elvis, mm-hmm. people know what they look like. It's just like, there's kind of these pop star names that are very iconic, but depending on what decade you grew up in, you might not have like the strong cultural context. Right. And then I think somewhere down the line, I learned that, you know, Bruce is sort of, in some ways, he's like the face of New Jersey. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, <laughs> you became aware of that, like, oh, it's kind of like a Jersey story. One of those Jersey stereos where it's like, oh, um, you must enjoy Bruce. And I think uh, within me, it, I don't know if it made a certain, it, it created contempt, but it was a sort of, it, it, was, it was sort of a weird feeling just like, because it's like you're in New Jersey and, and you, an outside person would have this expectation of you that you would behave in a certain way and listen to Bruce. And just like, I think maybe a bunch, maybe some other New Jerseyans have this feeling, but just like initially there's a sense of rebellion to, to that. And I would, I'd say like, um, yeah, yeah, it's just like I, I think I I avoided Bruce in certain ways. And um I I, I think I try I try to think about this because it's just like it's sort of intertwined with my own broader musical journey because uh surprisingly I I didn't really grow up a music fan until I didn't I didn't really consider myself a music fan until I think like middle school, high school. But in regards to Bruce, I think I learned bits bits and pieces about him over the years. Like, for instance, like the movie Philadelphia, where, you know, you have the song Streets of Philadelphia. And then I think, like, I like the song, but I had this sort of impression that he was like a soft rock artist because I think, like, the 90s was sort of that era. Sure. <laughs> and then I would say the the biggest 
um, entry point for Bruce for me was like around 2019, I started feeling, I don't know if it's the right word, but like nostalgic for New Jersey music where it's just like, I, I never really listened to it, but just like I, I made like a New Jersey music playlist. So I started with artists like um, Lauren Hill, Queen Latifah, Naughty My Nature, and then, you know, some local Jersey bands. And at that time, I was like, you know, might as well add Bruce because, you know, he's pretty much like, he's like synonymous with New Jersey music. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a good answer. And I do get that. Um, The... I grew up in Louisiana, but we moved to Texas like in 1984. So I was about 26, 27. Um, So I've spent my adult life here. And there is that cliche that everyone wears cowboy boots and everyone wears a cowboy hat. And Mm -hmm. that, you know, um, and that, Anytime there's a sporting event, they will show, um, you know, Fort Worth and the stockyard and, and this this cowboy culture. Um, and so I could see that um, being a rebel, right? Like, OK, I, you know, I'm more than because I'm a guilty of it as, as well, because um, I will honestly tell you, Eric, if I meet someone from Jersey, I will say, are you a friend fan of Bruce Springsteen? <laughs> and if I meet someone from the UK, I ask, are you a fan of Doctor Who? Right? And, right. and you know, it just and and I even admit, I I know this kind of sounds cliche, and I'm sorry, but you know, those are two of my favorite things. So I want to talk to you about them. Right. Um, so when you're doing this rediscover going to your roots, did you and I don't put words in your mouth, but is it kind of like, hey? this is pretty interesting music. This is, this is actually good. Is that what happened? Uh, well, I, I think with Bruce in particular, it was, I'll, 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 I'll kind of describe the journey, which is like, basically, please. sorry. Yeah, please. It was like, I think the, it's like, so I had listened to streets of Philadelphia. And then I think the first Bruce song that I, actively listened to as in like oh i'm going to go into this artist was like born in the usa which i'll be blunt i was not a fan of at the time because and it's like i i know like there's the whole deeper meaning of the song and the cultural context but like in its like 80s synthy form i was just like mm, it didn't quite grab me but i i kind of kept it on the playlist anyway so and i i want to interrupt you did it have anything to do with your, and you've shared this with me, your t- Taiwanese background? Yeah. Sorry. Like, did, did the song and your, with not liking Born in the USA, did it have anything to do with your Taiwanese background? Um, I, maybe in a distance sense, okay. like, I, I, I mean, I, I, I know I mentioned, I, 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 do, I do want to talk about like... Yeah, because I, I think that's interesting for you to talk about. Um, your background is... One of the things, Eric, that I specifically try to do in 2022, and I'm hoping to continue in 2023, it is very easy for me to fill this podcast with 50-year-old white guys, right? <laughs> Just because Bruce is demographic. So I specifically wanted to get younger listeners... Mm-hmm. And listeners of uh, that are either you know female gender or non-binary, mm-hmm. and also people from d- a cross section of different nationalities and different races. So, um, so I get that. So, yeah, I'm looking forward for us to talk about that. Let me. G- I'll, I'll tell you a reason why. I had um, last year. I had a uh, someone who was from Filipina descent. And she told the story that um, they were at a campground, like Indian guides or Cub Scouts or something. And that they were 
the other kids were screaming, singing Born in the USA around their tent, kind of mocking them. And so that was really traumatic for her. But she ended up becoming this amazing Bruce Springsteen fan. And she, the reason I found her is she wrote a column about her very um, complicated relationship with that song. And so that's why when you, and, and you're just saying, eh, it's too eighties for me to like, right? <laughs> so I'm going into this all deep thing. And you're like, no, it just, it's, there's too much synth in it, Jesse. So anyway, <laughs> please continue. <laughs> uh, I, I definitely wa- do want to talk about Bruce's relationship with my Asian identity, but yeah. I think in regards to my first impression of born in the USA, it was definitely like, okay. Hmm. How do I describe it? Like, there, I think I, I definitely when I first started listening to it, I had to unpack certain musical biases within myself. Like, okay, um, yeah, like it's not. I don't think it's like I hated synth, but definitely this synth might have been too triumphant feeling towards to me, and um. I think you. I think you do pose an interesting question because I. I, I will say like. The born in the USA song and maybe the era. There's. An element of, whiteness, that I might want to unpack later in the discussion, but okay, but but, in short, like I wasn't initially a fan of born in the USA in that form. And then I think the second song I listened to was Born to Run, which, yeah, that was, that was, I think I definitely enjoyed that more. Mm-hmm. Al- although it was, although I, it was somewhat undercut because it's like, like it's, it's a great song, but it's also a song about leaving New Jersey, which is, it's, it's, it's kind of a pessimistic song towards New Jersey. Right. And like, I, I think supposedly, I think it's like, some New Jersey state officials or state assembly, like they wanted to make it like the state anthem, but then it's just like, but it's just like, I think they they found out that it's like, oh, it's a pretty negative song towards New Jersey. Even. So it was, right. And I will say, like, I'll say the first Bruce song that I genuinely feel like I enjoy. I know it's like all these levels, but it's like the first song I genuinely feel like I enjoyed was Rosalita. It's like okay. it's just very danceable. All these twists and turns. It's like this building momentum. Mm-hmm. Do you... go ahead. Uh, uh, and then I think like 2019 was coincidentally the movie like the year that the movie Blind by the Light came out. Do you happen to see that? Yes, absolutely. And like it was just. Like, it just felt like this interesting coincidence, like, oh, I'm getting into New Jersey music. And so like there's this movie about Bruce Springsteen that came out and just and it kind of changed my impression, ch- changed some impressions because like I think before the movie, I had this impression impression that like, oh, Bruce is someone who's mainly loved by New Jerseyans or something. Or mm-hmm. and I didn't really get a sense of his wider cultural context. But yeah. I think like the film talks about t- tells this is based on a I think it's based on a memoir and so like, it talks about a British Pakistani teenager and I and I'm just thinking like oh okay if someone who isn't American or isn't white can relate to Bruce's music you know maybe I should go a little further. Yeah, um, I've I had um, the director on the podcast and we got to talk about it um, and. It. I read the memoir, and it really was not just about Bruce, but him finding his way on how I am both British and I am Pakistanian. How do I mirror those two parts of my life? Right. And uh, so, and you know, I love the film. Um, because it was a celebration of Bruce's music. And I also, it, I thought it, it shows sometimes 
the perils of being a newly fanatic viewer, right? Like mm-hmm. everything is the the most it's ever been. And there's just this, you know, everything, you're just this fanatic. And then later you kind of learn, well, okay, maybe I should be not so, you know, maybe I should tone it down a little bit. So yeah, mm-hmm. I, 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 yeah, I, I love the film. Yeah, I, I don't know if this this might be a hot take, but I just like, I think it was my, because I think that was like 2018 and 2019 was the year of like, were the two years of like jukebox music musicals. Yeah. I think it was like Bohemian Rhapsody, Rocket Man. Yeah. That's right. So I think it like, it. I think Blinded by the Light turned out to be my favorite of the four. And it also just like, it was, I think it was the kind of film, it was the film that, really push gave me like kind of that final push to actually like start really start listening to Bruce. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. It does. Um, do I always like to preface this with the amount of times you've seen Bruce perform live is not a fair barometer of how big of a fan you are, but have you been able to see him live? uh unfortunately no but okay. i think do you have tickets for this coming tour i i'm still i'm i'm holding out a bit just to see okay. if there's other op- more opportunities like yeah i, I i've been I, I definitely debated on getting tickets mm-hmm. um yeah, I'll, I'll just have to. I think I'll just have to see because, in terms of finances, but okay, yeah, it, sure. it, it's expensive. Yeah. It is, and so, and you know, um, so I get that. I totally understand. That's not a, um, it's, and that's why I always preface the amount of times you've seen Bruce is not a fair barometer of how big of a fan you are, because there are people who've never seen him perform live that are massive fans. And, you know, and then there are casual fans maybe that have seen him a couple of dozen times. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I think that's absolutely um, a fair, you know, assessment. Do um, talk to me about um, some of your favorite songs and, and albums. Let's see. Huh. I, I'm thinking about like just sort of the stage of what I've started to enjoy about Bruce because like I think I think going into it it's like like wild and wild innocent East Street Trouble that's like I think that's I think that's an album that I I noticed on like discussion forums it's like an album that people really like that's also kind of different from a lot of Bruce's work I think it's like I think this earlier funkier jazzier looser looser feel that people like which i also like sure but then i also like there's there's all this like subtle musical evolution that bruce goes through which is like okay there's but and if you it's like if you include his pre-recording career there's i think i don't have, i like i think there's the castiles there's steel mill there's Mm-hmm. the various i think bruce springsteen band and then i think there's his um greetings wild innocent the i think born to run which is sort of like wall of sound type things and then i think and like darkness darkness isn't really punk but it's like sort of influenced by the the rising punk scene in terms of energy mm-hmm. and then you see yeah you see all this subtle influence like i think yeah there's the country influence which that that, that's also a musical bias that i had to overcome within myself like i wasn't initially a fan of country but then just like bruce sort of gave me in his own way like bruce sort of gave me a crash course on a lot of different american musical influences yeah do tell me like 
talk to me a little bit more of that it th- share a little bit more of your journey are you were you just going and one album at a time and kind of exploring it talk talk to me through that a little bit um i think when i think about like the way i consume music like one way is like the sometimes i'll do like the complete playlist and i'll just throw on shuffle and see what i like yeah sometimes i'll do like the chronological album by album uh sometimes i'll do like a number of artists they have a so-called like classic run where it's like oh these i don't know these three or five albums are kind of like their key period and yeah i think and like i i think with bruce is sort of I, I sort of experimented with like a mixture and then like sometimes yeah i would just listen to like the complete and it would just shuffle me to like very different things mm-hmm. like um what was the most left field thing i said i think it was like i think it was like missing or lift me up like those, those mm-hmm. were like very like unexpected for me yeah do you um what do you think of the latest stuff like western stars letter to you the soul cover album um i though those were actually th- those were helpful in terms of like also giving me a better sense of like bruce's musical influences like he's hearkening back to i think the 60s a lot of his earlier influences i mm-hmm. initially it it did take me some time to get into them. Yeah. And I think, I think the more I listened to each album, I just, the more I just like started, it, it kind of, it furthered my own musical understanding as a whole. Like just like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a music expert, but just like knowing how, knowing just, just like the importance of, you know the drums the bass mm-hmm. the just the way a song can tell a story and evoke imagery it just and i think like say for, for instance like letter to you it just you have that whole context of how he's you know he's going back in time and going back to the present and he's evoking earlier eras like his earliest bands or some mm-hmm. of his early songs and it just when you have that when you have that context is kind of maybe like heightens the emotional connection yeah sure i could see that um and is you you talked about seeing blind of a light did you watch the western stars film and what did you think of it i (laughs) it's i no, I I think I should go back to it because when I first watched Western Stars, I I didn't quite understand it, and okay. I I think as I mentioned earlier, I had musical biases and I, against country, and it is <laughs> there is that feeling. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, and but I think like when I look back on Western Stars, it's just like you really get a sense of how lush it is and just how. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. It's yes, you, like you can say it's country, but it's also like orchestral pop, and just also, it's like he. I think I think he was playing a character on the album too. Like it's I think mm-hmm. he's playing a retired sort of actor at least. Yeah. Some of those it, yes, exactly. Yeah. So it's it's like it's not it's it's not like a straightforward thing. It's like it's 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 a it's a story and also almost also like a reflection on bruce's own career i think yeah um so you were talking a little bit and so let's visit a little about you know your feelings about bruce and the music of you know of different cultures share with me what you you said you wanted to visit with that a little bit talk to me what were you thinking oh you you mean like bruce's relationship with non-white and yes um well 
how do I want to put this? Well, I think one aspect is like, I've sort of, I've sometimes wondered about um, Bruce's identity. Like, does it, sometimes I've wondered, oh, is he, is he too American? Is he too American to not be relatable? And clear, like, he clearly has like a very, very sizable international fan base, especially in Europe. Yeah. But at the same time, I've there have been times where I've wondered where if his American identity can feel distracting. And I think, and there's also the element of me as an East Asian person and just thinking about, I guess, thinking about like Bruce's vision of society and just like, does mm -hmm. it, and who does it, who does it include? Yeah. And I think the, the reason I pose that question is like, I don't, like, I don't think Bruce would want to exclude anyone, but right. it's also, I think with the way social issues, um, but the way social issues break down is that sometimes you really need like active support and nourished encouragement from people. It, it can't just be a blanket inclusion. I think if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. And do you find people are a little surprised when you go, Oh, I'm a huge Springsteen fan. Do you get that look like, Really? Uh, I, I'm trying. Maybe like on some levels, like there's there's of course like the dad rock connotation, which maybe that's. Yes. And then, I don't. As far as I know, no one has criticized me directly in regards to my. Well, and I don't think criticism is the right word, but just surprised. And I'll I'll give you like my my wife um used to um do triathlons and uh marathons mm -hmm. and um and she would not look like people would think she's supposed to look, you know, she uh shorter, little stockier, and they would you know, and like, oh, I'm training for an Iron Man, and they get really, and she's like, yes, jackass. You know, not everyone is, you know, five four and a, you know, eighty five pounds. So, uh, I, you know, it's like that's what I was thinking of. Is you going, yeah, that's, uh, that's me. Yes, I, you know, I, I love Bruce music. Um, I, I, th I mean, I, I would say like you notice some expectations on what Bruce's fan base is supposed to be like, where just, right. um, I, well, I think going back to your earlier question about like, Oh, if born in the USA affects would affect me, in terms of like Asian identity, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I was, yeah, I, I've yeah, I've thought about that that's that song in terms of like an Asian context because I I think it, it it is a mixed song because I think Bruce's intention was to criticize the sort of the imagery and the just the way that the American government might view Asian people or Vietnamese people abroad, like the, like the phrase "go and kill the yellow man," right? And, like like his, the intention was to criticize it, but then I've also thought about like sometimes even if you have good intentions, it's like it's like the language is seeped in a certain context. Yeah, like, and 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 I know like also uh, the guys over it. Uh, Bruce Springsteen sings the alphabet. You know, they they were they have gone through every 
uh, Bruce Springsteen song in alphabetical order and they're going through a second round and you know hey little girl is your daddy home taken out of context this is really a creepy line right you know from I'm on fire right. <laughs> so uh, yeah so that the phrase as you said um, could could come off a little weird isn't it yeah I it's yeah, like I think we, I think we often draw from it like a shared language that in one era, I'm not going to say it was acceptable in one era, but it's just like maybe yeah. almost cert- normalized to an extent. And yeah, I, th- I think, yeah, I think in regards to like the Asian thing, it also reminds me of the, I think it was the David Bowie song China Girl or something. Yeah. Sure. And I th- I think that like the music I think it's like the music video and like David Bowie was a very vocal proponent of anti-racism like he Yeah. Like he, he was very like there's a famous MTV interview where he's like he criticizes the coverage of black artists and Yeah. It's, on it's like it's interesting because I I do I generally appreciate how David Bowie was so vocal about it, and he just like he just cut straight to the point. Yeah, in some ways. But then, even then, I think it's like the music video. You still use like imagery that, um, you you still use like like a kind of outdated imagery. Sure, I I could see that. Interesting. Um. So you talked a little bit about your building your YouTube channel and going on and you're talking about when you do poetry, is it original? Are you a writer yourself or is this you sharing things that really speak to you? Talk to me a little bit about that. Um, I think it's, it's a mixture. I, I do try to, I do try to include some original poetry. Okay. While also including like I think poems which have a longer history and just just trying to do my own spin on it. Just like sometimes if you read it in a certain tone or read it in a certain a certain delivery, it can come off very differently. Like just mm-hmm. yeah, just tr- I guess like it, it's almost like it's almost analogous to covering a song in a way and. I get, and sometimes, like songs themselves are in, are I try to like read them as poems and see like oh, if I if I take song lyrics and read them as poetry, like how how would it feel different? Yeah. So what's next for you? What do you want to do next creatively? Um, I I, I hope to like do more extensive educational videos just trying to trying to discuss things that I'm interested in. like for instance I like I like talking about the history of animation and um I think that like companies and studios studios like Disney Warner Brothers um uh UPA and it basically just like the his, history of kind of that art form and how that evolved mm-hmm. and yeah I'm, I'm ho- or in general just like trying to take a given topic and like give it a bit more elaboration rather than just like I, I still enjoy the poetry but I, I so hopefully I want to do something a bit more in depth okay good very nice um what have I not asked you that I should have? Um, I think. Let me let me check. Okay. I. It's always like to make sure that that you know there isn't stories that you're. Oh yeah, I meant to tell them that story, right? <laughs> I. Well, I I think like. Recently, I've been thinking more about 
my own Taiwanese identity and just mm -hmm. some of the parallels with New Jersey identity and I don't know I I, I see some similarities like okay in what way um like I I think it's in some ways just both New Jersey and Taiwan they they kind of have <laughs> they kind of have famous neighbors so to speak mm -hmm. like yeah I think like if you I guess if you follow the news it's like Taiwan's often in the news because of the threat of invasion from from mm -hmm. China and I think like a lot I suspect like a lot of people mainly know know about Taiwan because of because of China and mm -hmm. and it's like and it's like yes yes like the threat of invasion and just that cultural context is important but it's like Taiwan has its own history it has its own cultural influences from like there's Chinese influence but also Japanese and all and um I think indigenous Aust Austronesian indigenous influence and I think also newer immigrants that come to Taiwan mm -hmm. so it's just like I think yeah that's in terms of like YouTube I, I would want to talk about Taiwan a bit more okay and then I think with New Jersey it's just like I've I've been le learning more about just like New Jersey is genuinely underappreciated in certain ways because there's just like there's I don't know figures like historical figures artists um there's just, just there's just a lot of history that goes overlooked because I think New Jersey is mainly understood in relation to say New York City or Philadelphia and just the way it's like neighbored by these major cities and it's, and those major cities are an influence, but it's like, I think New Jersey uh, should be understood on its, understood and appreciated on its own terms. Mm -hmm. Well, good. Okay, very nice. Um, final thoughts before we get to the Mary question. Ah. Uh... I'll, I'll just give myself a couple moments to sure think. yeah that's no problem hmm. actually I, I i don't think i i forgot to mention my favorite bruce songs actually i think okay sure go for it uh i think in terms of right now it would be a toss-up between kitty's back okay new york city serenade mm-hmm and then I think for tw 21st century Bruce, I would say My City in Ruins. Or is it My City of Ruins? Or yeah, think, exactly. Yes. My City of Ruins. I think that's, I think that's my favorite 21st century Bruce okay. song. Nice. Good. All right. Um, all right. So I end every podcast with the Mary question. I'll set this up in case this is someone's first episode. Um, Jay Armstrong, who is a former um, high school English teacher, mm -hmm. he would take the song Thunder Road and would break it apart with his students. They would talk about the different lyrics. They would talk about imagery. They would talk about themes that Bruce explores. And then at the end of the two days, he would ask his class the question, does Mary get in the car at the end of Thunder Road? That is your question. Does Mary get in the car at the end of Thunder Road? I I, I thought about like how to break it down. Just sometimes I, I feel like it depends on the rendition. Sometimes it's the studio version or the live version. Okay. But, Expand hmm. on that a little bit. Because I think like I feel like this, for instance, the studio version is kind of like this build up of excitement that ends like it's. It, I think it comes off a bit more triumphant, whereas say something like maybe the Hammersmith 
performance is kind of like more wistful and kind of gently gently comes down okay but i think my final answer is i think she does get in the car and i will say it's like just because she gets in the car it's not a guarantee that she'll be happy but mm -hmm. the whole point is that 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 makes all the difference it's just like she's willing to get in the car okay all right i love it uh if someone wants to reach you how can they um well i sh i am on twitter my handle should be like at musings forest all that <laughs> i think mm -hmm. on social media i should be known as morning forest musings okay that's that would that would be my main social media identity okay and uh you want to give us the link to your youtube channel uh let's see yeah it should be at at morning forest musings okay good perfect well i enjoyed our discussion thank you so much for spending time with me i um i will check out the youtube page and uh look forward to continuing to interact with you on twitter uh i hope that um you end up getting a unexpected uh influx of cash and you're able to make a show uh you know and uh just, I wish you the best, and it is very nice to meet a new Bruce fan. Thank you, thank you, Jesse. It's, it's. I was a little nervous, but like, I think, yeah, I, it's been, it's been really fun to just share and ramble. <laughs> well, you did well. I, yeah, I could tell you were a little nervous, but that's okay. You did great, and you're welcome anytime. So if you, you know, if you think about like, hey, you know what, I'd like to talk about this sometimes. Just reach out to me and we'll we'll schedule another visit, okay? Oh yeah, yeah. And like it would be would it be a different set of prompts or just Yeah, just okay. we just have another discussion. Just whatever. Yeah, like if you think of something you'd want to talk about or visit, or if you come up with something, you know, if you end up going to a show, just whatever. We'll figure it out. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Listeners, I hope you are staying safe. Please remember to be kind. And we'll talk to you soon. Goodbye. There we go. Another episode. I'm about to go through a couple of things where you can reach me and give me feedback. Um, so if you want to skip this, I understand. But I do hope you check it out every once in a while. I'm available on Twitter at Jesse Jackson DFW. The show is available at SetLustingBruce. You can send me an email, setlustingbruce at gmail.com. You can send me a voicemail at 469-249-2442. I am currently doing a few other podcasts, Perfectly Good Podcast, John Hyatt from A to Z, where Sylvan Groth and I discuss every John Hyatt song in alphabetical order. My Babylon 5 podcast is Last Best Hope for Conversation, where Lou, Karen, and I discuss every episode of Babylon 5 in chronological order. I still am doing Next Stop Everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast with my brother in time, Charles Skaggs. And then finally, How Many Podcasts, the only podcast on the internet that counts, where my buddies and I discuss pop culture. You can go to our Patreon page and support the podcast for as little as a dollar a month. You can go to our Facebook page, like, and please, please go to iTunes or wherever you get your podcast and leave a five-star rating and review for all of the podcasts that I'm doing. It's okay if you don't listen to them, but if you subscribe and rate, it really will make my day better. Thank you, and I will talk to you soon. You just heard the fun talking, hard rocking, music loving, album ranking, fan thinking, joy spreading, lyric reading, story sharing podcast that is the one, the only, Set Listing Bruce. 
the theme for Set Lessing Bruce was written by David Rosen, used by permission.